This inner power is the freedom we have to be masters of our life experiences. But another part of that is we are free to bring into the dynamics of our life experience our spirituality, our spiritual nature. And what will happen towards the end of this month after we've been covering it for, for a while is that we're going to come to the realization that our personal freedom, if it is to be, it's up to me. It's a very personal experience. And, uh, and that's because I am, Angela, you are in, tr in control of your thoughts. I am the one that determines what my response will be to the events of the, of the physical life that we live. And I have the ability to enjoy this life experience in my own nature. And that nature is love, harmony, and abundance. We are one with the divine. And that's what our natives are. So I have the, the right and the ability to experience all the dynamics, the, the, all the things that happen in this human experience in that energy of love, harmony, and abundance. That's what we're all about. And that's what our freedom is about. And it's very, it's very personal. If it is to be, it's up to me. It's personal because nobody can obstruct or interfere with our freedom. The only one who can do that is whom? Tell me ourselves. We're the ones that will obstruct our own uh, freedom and interfere with it. This idea of obstruction and interference has to do with, and I, I use this term today, belittling our, our spiritual nature. I know it's harsh. We belittle our spiritual nature. When we allow the events, the contents of the human drama to take control over our consciousness, we are belittling spirit. And what does this all mean? It means that when I have a situation, a circumstance, or an event, and, and it brings anger, sometimes hatred, anger, fear, and doubt into our experience, and I react to it, then I'm belittling my spiritual entity, my spiritual life. And um, I, I like to compare these situations that we get into, and we all do it, and these events in the human drama, I like to compare it to something. In relationship to our spiritual power, it can compare to what? A flea on the leg of an elephant. Think about that. I thought about that this morning. That's pretty cool. It puts us into perspective. I don't know about you folks, but I'll tell you, I've got lots of opportunities to anger, react with anger, fear, and doubt, and and uh, irritation, and sometimes depression. Don't we have those? We're here to experience a whole enchilada of human life. And this is how we grow. But if we exclude our human nature into that uh, drama of life itself, we're vulnerable to, and become, we become prisoners in our own minds because we are under the auspices then of the events in our life. So this idea of freedom is being able to rise above it and transcend what's happening and realize that to, you folks who gave this to uh, Kim, your spiritual thought was awesome for me. Because you, you practice exactly what we preach here. That we, we have to bring into the experience our true nature and we are free to do that. Or we are free to cave into it and be sucked into the drama. That's our job. So I don't know about you folks, but I have lots of opportunities to do this. Years ago when I was superintendent of schools, I realized that every day brings in a drama that's going to irritate me. And, you know, it's my true nature, being irritated. <laughs> but anyway, and you have all this stuff, and then we have people like Arch out there who's on the union side. And, uh, friend, friend. But there are th things that happen that kind of irritate you. And so I decided one day, I talked to my se secretary, Ann. I said, Ann, I want to do something every Wednesday at 11 o'clock, and I want you to shut the door and ignore any noise you hear in my office. <laughs> And, and I say, you know, because, you know, it's cumulative. Tension is cumulative. Whether we like it or not, if we don't release it, especially if you're an Italian Marine, <laughs> uh, some bubble's going to burst and you're going to explode and be an idiot. But anyway, uh, so I said to Ann, I said, listen, I want you to shut the door, ignore any noise you hear. Every Wednesday at 11 o'clock for one hour, I'm going to release the tension. And so what I decided was, these little things happen, it happens in our life, doesn't it? That irritates you, and then you think about it all day, and it ruins your entire day. And I thought, that happens every day when you're in a charge of a school district. 
So I decided that when something irritates me, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take a sheet of paper, a little piece of paper, and write what irritates me on that little paper. <laughs> and then I created a, a part of a drawer in my desk. That would be my irritation drawer. <laughs> so I would do this, something would irritate me, I'd write down, put it in the irritation drawer, and be done with it. Forget about it. <laughs> Leave it in the door. And then I would do that, and the rest of it was just cool. It was released. I didn't have to worry about it ruining my day. And then on Wednesdays at 11 o'clock, some days I had a lot of stuff in that drawer. <laughs> and then what I would do, Anne would shut the door, and, and I'd go, <laughs> and I'd go through all this stuff. That <laughs> 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 I can't stand this. That Lord Jesus got to get out of my life. <laughs> and I would go through all this stuff. And after the hours, I'm I feel so much better. <laughs> so this is how we can relieve tension in our own lives. But what it does, and I, I, I get so tired of parenting. <laughs> what, what we do is anytime we allow the dynamics of the human drama to do a mind thing on us, to take mind control, then where, what are we doing? We're belittling our spiritual nature, which is all powerful, it's eternal, and it has no problems. And uh, what do we mean by the dynamics of human drama? I thought about that this morning. The dynamics is what we read about in the paper. It sells papers, so you have to learn about all the shootings in Colorado, and you learn about the wars, and all this human dynamics of politics, everybody hates each other, and, and all this stuff. And that's the dynamics. If we allow the dynamics of this human drama to control our lives, we set ourselves down the trail and we belittle it. We're not experiencing the, the human drama as we're meant to experience. Because we're meant to experience this stuff, not take it home to mama, but to release it, let it go, and go on to the next one. Because the human third dimensional is ever changing. It's always, it, there's nothing stable. And within ourselves, we need to come to our, our realization that in this uh, spiritual dimension, there's nothing that's changing. Uh, it's all the same. It's all perfect and it's all powerful. There's a little story that, uh, well, I want to get to my goldfish first. Our consciousness is like goldfish. Think about it. Our consciousness is like goldfish. Let me tell you about it. This is good. I am egotistical at times. <laughs> you know, when, we're, when we allow our consciousness to be in this little box of awareness, you know, like all this physical stuff's happening, all of a sudden we're part of it, and we're in the world and of it, and it's bothering us, and we react to it, and we do all this stuff. Our consciousness is this little tiny, itty bitty little box of awareness. But if we realize that none of this stuff can touch us because we're eternal spiritual beings, and we expand that consciousness. Stall and I, years ago, we had a, a fish pond that had a waterfall. And we take these bitty, bitty little fish, goldfish, uh, they're bitty baby carp is what they are, and we decide to put them in our pond and just let them survive. Those little itty bitty two inch goldfish that were that small in this little bowl, all of a sudden became six and eight inches long and big. Because we, they expanded, it expanded its environment. We're like that. And those same goldfish, if you put it in a larger pond, they'll, they'll be huge carp, they can be three feet big, I mean in, in, a, in a lake. So the bottom line is we, we need to expand our consciousness, not curtail it. We curtail our consciousness when we have the feeling that we are a physical body. That the effects of the world has control over us. That's nonsense. The economy is not going to touch our soul. Nothing can touch our soul. Nothing can harm us in any way because we're eternal. And there's a story, and I don't know where it is in my notes, so I'll just relate it anyway. This magazine uh, uh, reporter uh, was directed to do an article on mind-body healing. So she had read about this guy who was a tremendous healer in India, who was just pretty awesome. And so she decided to go to India and interview this guy. This guy. And she asked him, she said, what is your major problem in this healing uh, area? And he says, what are you talking about? There are no problems. I have no problems. And she, and she said, you mean the entire world, six billion people in the world have problems, and you don't have any problems? He said, absolutely not. What does that mean? He says, look at yourself. You don't have problems. I don't have problems. We're eternal spiritual beings. 
We always we were here before time began, and we'll be here forever. How how could we possibly have problems? The only thing that has problems is the physical. Your body has problems. So 